virtual panel. My name is Diana Nassar. I'm a second year MBA student at the GSB, and I'm joined by Hannah Rengel, also a second year MBA student here at the GSB. We will be talking about our journey to the GSB, the student experience here on campus, and answer many of your questions, as many as we can in the 30 minutes that we have. We will choose questions that most people are interested in based on the poll results. We won't be talking about the admission process, the application, or financial aid, but you can contact the MBA admissions office directly in case you have um, questions on any of these. To submit a question to us, please feel free to just click on the Q&A button a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. So let's begin with introductions. Hannah, can you please start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? What were you doing before coming to the GSP? And what are your goals after graduation? Of course. Thanks, Diana. I'm Hannah. I'm originally from South Florida. I went to the University of Miami for undergrad. And after Miami, I decided to join the Navy. And I did that for six years as a supply and logistics officer mostly focused in Southeast Asia, finished up in San Diego, and they decided to come to Stanford GSB. Wow, this looks cool. Thanks, Hannah. <laughs> As for myself, I'm from uh, Jordan. I was the product manager at Amazon before joining the GSB. And after graduation, I would like to still do product management, but probably in the tech media um, space. Awesome, so now let's get started with some of the questions submitted by the audience. Um, so the first question we have is, why an MBA? What made you decide this was the right time for business school? Do you want to take this one, Hannah? Of course. So as I was deciding to get out of the Navy, I looked at the jobs that were available to me. And they're mostly operations focused, kind of leading teams of 10 to 20 people, pretty similar to what I was doing in the service. I felt like business school just opens up an entirely different set of doors. You can pursue finance, tech, consulting, startups, et cetera. And I really wanted to kind of open up my options. And I can tell you that after a year at Stanford, that really is the case. I don't feel like I'm pigeonholed into operations and that there's a lot of different industries I can pursue. Oh, yeah, and this is actually very similar to what I also wanted to do. I, I felt that I just wanted to explore what's out there in the universe and like what other opportunities are available for me. And this was the main reason why I came for an MBA. Um, so yeah, it's either if you want to sort of change your industry or change the function or something like that. I think that's personally what drove me to do my MBA. Cool. So how would you describe a typical class at Stanford GSB in terms of diversity and background? And I think that'll be interesting given your background in the Navy. Um, so yeah, can you tell us a little, more, a little bit about a typical class at the GSB? Sure, in so classes in terms of a diversity perspective. The GSB is really good at kind of curating this, you know, 40% international, 40 something percent women, X percent minorities, um, LGBT. And so you get this really just diverse kind of demographic background and that really creates a much more fruitful discussion. <sighs> Um, in term, but there's also ideological um, back, different backgrounds as well. You see people from all different si ends of the political spectrum, all different levels of a socioeconomic background. And I think it just enables me to really learn about my classmates and, and what they're passionate about and just have a much kind of better understanding of, of people and what's out there. Yeah, and I think also to that point, I feel that in our classes, we have a lot of um, different and diverse cases that we mm -hmm. study from, like as an international student, I sometimes see uh, cases that are not only from the United States, but from businesses around the world. And I find this super fascinating. Mm -hmm. And to your point around diversity and inclusion, I really love that I recently started publishing our reports mm -hmm. of diversity and inclusion. I think that's uh, a really good sign for, mm -hmm. for the school to also stress the importance of, you know, the numbers mm -hmm. that we publish around diversity and inclusion. So, yeah, amazing. Um, how do you usually spend your time after class? Definitely. Mm. So <laughs> that varies person to person. <laughs> you, you honestly, I feel like, especially first year, you're deciding what not to do because there are so many options. You can do something social in a small group, social in a large group, something professional, something, you know, or you can spend more time reading cases and working on homework. So it really is balancing that academic, professional, and social kind of areas. And now second year, it, it calms down a little bit, which is great. So I, I've, I've mostly figured out what I'm doing professionally. I'm, I'm gonna go into consulting after business school. Mm -hmm. So now I spend most of my time on social, 
um, classes that I'm really passionate about and want to kind of learn deeper and then attending a lot of the really great speakers that we have here at the GSB. Yeah, totally. And I, I totally think the same way, especially for first year, we were super intentional about community creation, especially that we live at the residences here at the GSB. It just mm -hmm. feels like there is so much going on after class to, you know, around community building, going to talk, which is one of the most famous traditions that we have in which students share their, their own personal stories with the class. I've just like enjoyed getting to uh, know my classmates, especially in the first year. And now I feel like I have more control to just do mm -hmm. the stuff I like. Cool. Um, I can take this one um, first and I'll give you some time to think about it. Um, what have been some of your favorite classes and why? And I'm taking this one because I know I have, oh my God, like my favorite class ever at GSP has been uh, freedom, Democracy, and Capitalism by Keith Hennessy. Mm -hmm. It's like as an international student, I was trying to learn about the U.S. and, you know, the, these three pillars that define what the U.S. is, and I found this class fascinating. And it's always really um, amazing to me how the GSP offers classes that not only talk about business, but also, you know, as an international student, it gives me a chance to learn about America and, like, policy making and all of these other issues. So this has been definitely one of my favorite classes, although I can definitely talk about business classes, but this is like my honest answer. Do you have a favorite class? It's so hard to pick one. So I'll just briefly talk about two. Um, I took a personal tax and investing class, which is arguably one of the most practical classes oh, you did. I've taken. The um, Lisa, exactly. oh my gosh, I oh, take this one. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's you know some of the biggest financial decisions you'll ever make personally. And I feel now much better prepared as I do my taxes, as I think about personally investing. That was great. But I just finished up strategic communication, which is kind of a public speaking class. Still got a lot to work on, but it was really great just to like see how you are as a speaker and really develop that skill set. Are you taking the four unit one or the two unit one? The four unit one. Yeah, because I'm I'm taking the two unit okay. one and I totally agree. It's an it's an amazing course. And I heard in the four unit one we also do writing as well. Mm -hmm. And I just like missed the chance to do the writing one but now I knew. But you're gonna do winning writing. Right? Exactly. I wanna do that too. And it's oh my god, I hear it's going to be one of my favorite classes. So <laughs> let's see. Um that's amazing. Okay. Next on, can you please describe the opportunities available to connect with, stu with students from around the world and learn about the places and cultures they come from? So in terms of just Stanford or GSB classmates, a lot of our classmates that are international lead trips to their home country. Mm -hmm. um, I went to, to Lebanon with Lebanese classmates. I'll be going to Africa over winter break with um, some of our African classmates. I'm leading one of the glo um, global study trips to Japan. I'm not oh, Japanese, yeah. but I lived there for a couple years, and I'm going and I'm leading it with fellow Japanese classmates. So one easy way is you travel to these countries um, with your classmates, and then you just you know they they host food nights. They each have the kind of their own identity clubs, and and it's been really great just to learn about people where they're from. I got to go to Jordan, but not with Diana, unfortunately. Um, but now we I, can always work on that in the future. But we talk about Jordan pretty yeah. often, and, and you tell me about your experience there, and I talk about my trip there and ask you questions mm -hmm. about about life there. So it's it's a pretty fruitful conversation. Yeah, and I also just find a chance to talk with you and learn about your experience in Florida is also like amazing for me <laughs> as an international student coming in. I feel that the GSP creates this like bi-directional mm -hmm. uh, sort of channel of communication where we international students maybe tell students from the U.S. about our culture, but we also get to know a lot about your culture. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, as you mentioned, just like one-on-one -on -one conversations or trips or even when people tell their stories at talk or just like having coffee with anyone is actually a great chance mm -hmm. to, to know about this. Um, awesome. Um, so Hannah, as a Navy veteran, did you draw heavily on your military, military experience in your application essays? Uh, and are there any recommendations generally that you want to give on applying as a veteran? Definitely. So I think um, reach out to the Veterans Club. We, we love talking to applicants. But in terms of talking How about- How they reach out to Veterans Club? We have a GSB Veterans Club page and there's like a little box you can fill out there and, and we'll get your email and, and someone from the club will respond. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the application, I think the best piece of advice that I got was that it should be 
uncomfortable writing it and, and it should really kind of dig to the core of who you are. And for me, that did include a deployment story from the military. I don't think it has to though. I just think it has to be something personal that really gets to the core of who you are. And for a lot of veterans, that is something about their military experience. But because the rest of your application is, you know, just talking about all of your accomplishments where the essay is the one part to really hone in as to who you are as a person. Amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so this next one, I'll take it first. Uh, what surprised you most at the GSP? Um, I think as an international student, there has been a lot of um, like surprises to me, not only at the GSP, but just like, you know, moving from my country and coming to a little different culture and, you know, experiences and all of that. But I think the thing that I was pleasantly surprised with at the, at the GSP is my classmates, mm -hmm. just how diverse they are, how, um, just like amazing and smart and ambitious and driven people are around me. Um, I think that was one of the things that surprised me most at the GSP is that I felt that I managed to create home away from home and just be surrounded with people that you can literally learn from every hour, like basically. Um, what surprised you most at the GSP, Hannah? I think especially second year, a lot of times it kind of feels like an all day podcast where you're just constantly listening and learning and getting your perspective challenge and kind of growing mentally. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're working, you're used to just, you know, showing up at a certain time, kind of grinding and then ending at a certain time. Whereas an MBA student, you just really get to step back and really have your perspective challenged and learned about all these really interesting things. And that's, that's been surprising. Yeah, amazing. Uh, well, I just want to remind everyone that they can post their questions in the Q&A tab for us, and we will be happy to answer them at the time, the remaining time we have. So, Hannah, it's funny, we were just talking about this. We have one question about the executive challenge. <laughs> so, someone is asking, could you tell us about the executive challenge first year students participate in? Well, I don't have much to say, except that everyone is so dressed up today. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few days you'll see everyone at the GSB wearing a suit and tie. Suits, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's it's a really great just a bonding experience with your squad. So your squad is six other MBA ones and an MBA two facilitator that you do this whole first quarter um, kind of experience with. And then it kind of culminates in this executive challenge where you get a case and you go up and you kind of do a mock role play with really successful executive alums mm -hmm. and and it's just a really good way to kind of put all that you've learned first quarter um into this experience and i just what i remember most is just really bonding with my squad and having a, a fun day to kind of culminate the end of fall quarter yeah, and like do some role plays mm -hmm. it's like yeah they give us cases and we do the role plays as, mm -hmm. as if we were executives now and then mm -hmm. towards the end one squad wins but there's no prize <laughs> it's just like a fun day all to get <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing um could you comment on how the bay area influences your mba experience um I think as someone interested in tech, this has been very interesting for me, um, A, in picking the which school I wanted to go to, but B, I think just the fact that we breathe the same air of Silicon Valley makes it sound like, I mean, you, you just cannot not know so much about Silicon Valley and what's happening here and like the tech landscape and all of that. And I think that's really, really important uh, as someone who wanted to work in tech. But I would say, even if you're not, and I'm, I would be curious to, know, to hear your opinion since you are not interested in tech, obviously. Um, I feel like there are, um, there is access to all the other industries as well. And I don't know, can you speak more to if you're interested in finance or consulting or all the other jobs? Mm -hmm. How does that influence your experience? Definitely. So I can speak as someone that uh, tech's great, but it's, I don't think it's for me. And I'm entrepreneurship curious, but I'm not all in like a lot of our classmates. But I still love being in the Bay. One, just the access to the people that are around here are phenomenal. We just get fantastic speakers cycling. If they're not already in the Bay, they cycle through and visit. So that's been great. You just get to visit very easily all these awesome companies. I've gone to Facebook several times, Google, Uber, Waymo, because they're all like, you know, a 10, 15 minute ride away. And that's been really cool. Um, and then I just feel like there's this entrepreneurial energy in the Bay and everyone's really trying to create something or grow something or change something. And that definitely is, you know, the Stanford ecosystem 
goes well with that. Yeah, and I remember we both actually organized the WIM trek, we did. Women in Management trek. Mm -hmm. uh, to your point, we visited so many companies and mm -hmm. they were within, I don't know, like 10, 15 minute drive. Yeah. Um, cool. It was amazing to meet amazing women mm -hmm. from all of these companies and, mm -hmm. you know, just like hear about their experience. So I think easy access is one of the biggest things that mm -hmm. we get um, at the GSP. Awesome. Hannah, what were your career goals before you started GSB and have they changed? Definitely. So my career, I do have to get back to San Diego. My partner's um, still down there with the Navy. So consulting made sense because it allows me to do that. But I wasn't dead set when I came to the GSB. I explored a couple different things. I'm still like, maybe I should do something entrepreneurial next quarter on the side. So I haven't closed that off. But overall, um, I decided that just consulting was the right fit, allows me to kind of get that analytic skill set that a lot of my classmates already have um, and really kind of get that first glimpse at the private sector before kind of thinking what I want to do elsewhere. Awesome. Um, yeah, and I think um, not similar to you, actually opposite to you. I did not have <laughs> any career goals before coming to the GSB. I, I have been in tech for like all my life. And so I was like, I'm not going to do tech. Um, but once I came to the GSB, I actually realized that I like tech uh -huh. and I, li I like it more than um, anything else that was offered. Um, and uh, I think that's when I realized that I wanted to do it even after graduation. Mm -hmm. I shifted more towards tech and media because I figured that's the space I wanted, but I really appreciated the chance to um, get to know yourself more and realize more what are the things that you like and what are the things that you don't. Um, and I think sometimes reaffirming the things that we thought we didn't like mm -hmm. is also like a good outcome of the MBA. Um, so yeah, I'm just going back to tech, uh, but I'm going back way more prepared, I hope. <laughs> Definitely. And you entered that SNAP this summer, which is yeah, pretty cool. Oh my God, it's <laughs> dope. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, so we, we got another question about lead labs. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe your experience with leadership labs and what you learned most from them? I think what I learned most from lead labs was I was used to kind of interacting with like a very specific type of people like military style leadership is very different than the private sector. So I think I learned a lot more of those like soft skills and how to like come off softer and less direct and have more influence. And you get pretty close with your squad and they're very comfortable giving you honest feedback and how you come off um, when you are kind of leading a management. So I think if anything, it was just good, honest feedback and a very like friendly, um, warm environment. And then just also kind of in a squad and a smaller team, you see what other people's strengths are and you kind of learn from them as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, to me as well, I think it's feedback, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, we keep saying at the GSB that feedback is a gift. Love to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think just getting continuous feedback, because with leadership labs, you meet every Wednesday to do role plays and you get feedback uh, on how those went. Uh, so I think getting continuous feedback allows you to see those blind spots that you didn't mm -hmm. know about yourself before. And I think that's, that has been my biggest um, uh, learning from uh, lead labs. Awesome. Um, I'll take this one. I'll give you more time to think about it. If you were to go back in time and do something differently at the GSB, what would it be? Um, well, it's hard because I, I say now, like we already are, we know what we've been through. And so it's so easy to say I would be less hard on myself, but I would, I don't think that that would have been the case if I started again. I think um, when you come into a place where people are super accomplished and smart and everyone is just like amazing, um, you start doubting yourself and that could cause you to become really, really hard on yourself, at least in my case. Um, and, but things ended up to be really, really fine and I'm good. I'm in my second year. I like, and I'm interviewing for jobs, everything is super fine. So I wish that I had this mindset um, coming in, but I know that it's hard, but this has been just my own experience. Would you do anything differently, Hannah? Yes, this was a very easy one to answer. I think I overcommitted on some extracurriculars mm. year one. And the issue with that is then you don't have the bandwidth or capacity for extracurriculars later on. Awesome. So you, you get to the GSB and there are all these kind of shiny objects and you want to do it all. And I, I think I said yes to too many of them. And now second year, there are these great opportunities. And I'm like, I don't really have the time or capacity mm. for that. So looking back year one, I would have really thought about each thing before I committed to it and really 
been kind of like ruthlessly prioritizing those things and then just really asking myself what will I get out of this extracurricular involvement so overall like being president of that's club has been great um leading the Japan global study trip that's going to be great but there are a couple other ones I'm like is this really worth the time commitment Awesome. Well, this this is great that you mentioned that because we have a question actually about the extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you tell us what are some of the most popular extracurricular activities here at the GSB? Mm -hmm. Maybe through the lens of what you did, but also other things that are popular that you haven't done. Definitely. I think so. Our buckle fellows, which I'm we're both not. We're both not. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of like the most famous kind of extracurricular things you can mm -hmm. do. Um, you'll take touchy feely as a first year and then second year you'll be that MBA two squad facilitator, which they're all right now at an executive challenge. So that's a pretty kind of classic um, major time commitment extracurricular. Otherwise, there's a ton of different clubs and clubs are like affinity groups and then clubs are professional kind of interests and then they're they're like just kind of social, you know, wine club or eat club, those kind of more fun interests. So a lot of people join one of those and take a leadership um, position in those clubs. I mentioned I did president of veterans club. That's been great. People also TA. Um, mm -hmm. I'm TA next quarter for two real estate lectures that are very successful and, and really great guys. Wow, and good for you. <laughs> I know you're, you're I already TA yeah. this quarter. Yeah. Right. So there's just and then people also like work at maybe um, like a venture capital firm that has a relationship with the GSB. Mm -hmm. Tons of people are starting their own companies or working with a startup. So there's so much extracurricular stuff going on and yeah. it's it's hard to kind of mention it all totally and to your point even though our book is like the most popular or something i feel like i've done so many other things and like both of us have done so many things that are not as popular but i feel that they were like they spoke to us more mm -hmm. maybe to your point it's clubs or you know things that you just enjoy doing like taing a course or something like that uh, I also love doing work with the MBA office and mm -hmm. just like the admissions and like speaking to admits. I think that's something I really enjoy doing. I also was on the Distinguished Teaching Award uh, Committee oh, cool. where we get to pick a, a, like a Stanford professor that we want to um, give an award to. That has been extra fun for me. So yeah, I, I would just say that even if you don't get into one of the most popular extracurricular activities for whatever reason, there is just so much to do. Mm -hmm. And I love this sheet that we have You get when you get in of like all the extracurricular activities and how much time commitment mm -hmm. each of them uh, requires so that you can plan mm -hmm. to avoid overcommitting as you mentioned. But you won't avoid it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, you will overcommit. It's like, <laughs> awesome. What is the most valuable thing you have learned so far? This is deep. <laughs> oh my God, I guess. Oh, this one. The last one. I think maybe through talk, mm -hmm. um, and we mentioned talk, that's where once a week, two students spend about 30 minutes kind of like telling their life story and major events or people that have impacted them. I think from that, I just learned like you really can't judge people or know what what they're going through or where they've come from. And like you think, you know, someone and then you hear their story and you're like, I had no idea. Yeah. So that's just been like been kind of like a fantastic weekly reminder of, you know, the importance of like you don't truly know someone and, and showing empathy and just wanting to hear other people's stories. Wow. I don't know if that's the most, but that's just something I, I look forward to on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And I think the other thing that was very valuable for me is learning about myself mm -hmm. more as well. I think that we do a lot of um, sort of introspective exercises at the GSB and we spend a lot of time with ourselves and journal and all of that and, and so many courses that I feel you just become um, deep with your emotions and like more introspective and I think just learning more about yourself has been a very valuable mm -hmm. thing for me. Um, what are you looking forward to the most next quarter? Hmm. My fiscal policy course <laughs> with Key Tennessee, and I just like it. So. <laughs> I took that one last year. It's really good. I, oh, you took yeah. oh, you took all the courses that I like. Um, I think it's this, and also uh, low key notes are coming next quarter. Mm. So I'm so super looking forward to oh. either delivering one or even like getting to know um, the stories, um, mm -hmm. like ideas to change the world uh, from our classmates. Low key notes are like these kind of 10 minute TED talks that students give, and, and they're really cool. But you're giving one that next quarter. Uh, I hope so. I still like the results are still not out. So okay. let's see. Awesome. Are you looking forward to anything? 
next quarter um so that's when i'll i'll be taing um i'm planning our big kind of military service community dinner i just learned that we got um general mattis former secretary of defense as our keynote speaker which wow. is pretty crazy to be emailing with general mattis um and then also our japan trips in the spring so kind of the last minute or the last um preps for that so that's kind of like when all my extracurriculars will come to a head and I'm looking forward to like really seeing the fruits of my labor other than that it's a good time just to go snowboarding easy to get to tahoe and as a, a avid snowboarder I'm, I'm also looking forward to that yeah awesome. and vegas foam <laughs> oh <No>, yeah <laughs> um i know we have like around five minutes left uh we've received so many questions on the application and again i would uh sort of ask people to send the admission office about them, but maybe we can generally just take one question. Could you describe your application experience and what would you do differently now that you look back? Mm -hmm. I think just like a general piece of advice to all the prospective students. Um, I don't know, if I, if I were to think about it, uh, I would not have like changed anything that I did. I would probably just like be less stressed out about the whole thing. Honestly, what the GSP is interested in is just, as we mentioned, knowing you. So how can you present your story and what can you tell and show um, to people in the in the application is, is all that matters. I wouldn't worry about like getting references from, I don't know, people that are really famous in the business world or something like that. I didn't have any of these like two Jordanian people <laughs> recommended me, so that's absolutely fine. I would really focus on telling my story and um, yeah, that's it. That's what gets you into the GSP, I would say. Yeah, I think what I did well with the application was I gave myself a ton of time. I gave myself enough time to take the GMAT twice. Um, that was huge. Gave myself enough time to really iterate for a couple months on my um, essay, focus on my recommenders, that was good. I actually reread my essay recently and I don't think it was that good. So I same, probably same. <laughs> so I probably would have gone back and, and done that differently. I think it's kind of interesting. I probably would say what matters most to me now and why is like probably changed in some ways or at least I have more clarity about that. So I would say really just focusing, you know, when it comes to your essay, just honing in on who you are, being authentic, showing how you know you created impact or how you um, kind of resonate with the change lives, change organizations, change the world ethos of Stanford. Mm -hmm. But um, it's pretty introspective and it, and it doesn't come naturally. So. Yeah, and I like, it, honestly, we didn't we didn't need to make up anything or whatever. It's like, how can you show your authentic and true self, I would say. So with this maybe our last question, we have one minute, so I'll let you really quickly take it. Okay. How did your experiential learning opportunities affect your perspective the experiential learning that we do at the gsp like the role plays and all of that how helpful or how did that shape your perspective at the gsp um i think it i think one of the biggest things that you just learn is like how to have influence and it's easy to just, just like come at people like pretty directly and just like how to more subtly um move a conversation to like get what you want to happen and i'm still working on that but that's been like a good thing through the experimental learning. I don't know if that's a great answer though. So yeah. you, you should, you should well, end it. No, I think, I think that's, <laughs> that's fine because we're almost out of time today. Um, but Hannah, thank you very much. Um, and any final words or uh, advice for people for like 10 seconds? Yeah, you know, anything to say. I, business school is awesome. It's two years to really reflect on who you are and kind of see that whole world of professional opportunities. Stanford's phenomenal, but all top business schools are phenomenal. I hope that you end up here. Would love to see you here, but you'll you'll be successful no matter what. Great. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone in the audience for participating. You can learn more about the MBA program by visiting the GSP website at gsp.stanford.edu. Thanks again and have a great day.